What's up guys, PJ here with 3D Printing Canada. Today I'm gonna to bring you Micro Swiss's linear rail system. So stay tuned guys, I'm gonna show you how to install it on this Ender 3. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you what's inside the box when you purchase the Micro Swiss linear rail kit. Okay, we'll start here. You get the mounting plate, the mounting plate again for your belts. You get some hardware to mount your extruder motor on. All the stuff you would get from the standard Micro Swiss direct drive stuff comes in here. You get the hot block, you've got your extruder arm, your heat sink and heat brake, as well as your piece of Bowden tube extra hardware and a few tools, clips, a sock, the QR code where you can go to their website to see the instructions, along with a clip to hold the cabling, an extra Bowden tube if you choose to, as well as the extension cable for your stepper motor. And they've also included some spare zip ties for you guys. So that's what comes inside the box. So there are a couple things you're gonna need as well as the Micro Swiss linear rail system. You're gonna need a 300 millimeter um, rail as well as the block. So this is an MG and 12H and you're also gonna need the 300 millimeter rail, which we also sell here. Um, on top of that, you'll need some three by eight millimeter socket head bolts and some M3 T-nuts for a 20 extrusion, okay guys? Today, we're gonna be installing the linear rail system on an Ender 3 here. It's an Ender 3 Pro. Now, it's not stock already by any means necessary. It's already got the Micro Swiss Direct Drive system on it. We're gonna be taking this off and installing the linear rail system onto it. It also has an SKR 1.4 uh, board in it by Big Tree Tech. Okay, so this is not a stock Ender, but everything I'm doing today will apply to a stock Ender or any other machine that has a 2020 extrusion with the belt running in the middle. So if you have a 2020 extrusion, but a bigger printer, you're just gonna need to make sure that you buy the appropriate size linear rail to install this onto your printer. So they've really left it open for a lot of printers to be attached to the linear rail system to. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna disassemble the old system that's on here. Okay guys, now that we've got the old Micro Swiss Direct Drive system removed off of the 2020 extrusion, I'm going to show you guys how to install the linear rail and the MGN12H bearing, um, as well as uh, you're going to need to put one socket head M3 by eight screw in this end, another one in the opposite end, and then skip three holes and put one more, and the same with on the other side. Skip three holes and one more. Now, to make things a little bit quicker, I've already installed three. I will show you installing one more ahead of time, which isn't very hard, guys. You just go ahead and drop that M3 by eight socket head bolt through, and just put this T-nut on ever so slightly. You don't need to have too many threads on. That way it makes it a lot easier for installation. Now that we've covered all the other basic steps, we're gonna start with step one of installing the linear rail to your 2020 extrusion. So what I like to do is I like to take these T-nuts and line them all up flat so it'll pop right on there. Sometimes you might have to give it just a little bit of a wiggle or finessing and there she goes, she's in. So you do also need to make sure that you have enough room that the carriage is gonna come over and hit your end stop, okay? You just take your M2.5 hex driver, go ahead and tighten down the T-nut. Make sure you snug them down fairly well. Make sure after you've done that, if you do pop these off while you're installing things, you're careful not to slide your bearing block off and have one of your bearings fall out. Now we're gonna move on to step two, installing the direct drive carriage along with the bearing block holder that your belts hook up to. 
Okay. It's going to come with a bag that has four uh, M3 screws in it that are going to mount to your MGN12H bearing and mount your direct drive carriage onto your linear rail system. I'm just going to start with one to get it set up and then I'll put the other four in. This part can be a little tricky when you're working backwards at the machine. So the reason I only put one is so I can hold it. Go ahead and line it up with my bearing. And I'm not gonna bolt it, tighten this down all the way. I'm just gonna snug it up so the carriage doesn't move around. Again, I just like to snug them up at first. That way everything lines up and seats correctly. Now I'll just give an extra little bit of torque to all four. I tend to do it like I'm doing a car tire and go from point to point where you get an even amount of torque down on all four of your bolts. Make sure now you come over, you can hit that end stop without losing any balls, all right? And there you go, guys, that's step two finished. Let's move on to step three. I'd like to show you guys how to correctly assemble a Micro Swiss hot end. If you don't assemble these correctly, you're gonna get jams for sure. But when they're assembled correctly and heat tightened, you won't have to worry. Uh, another thing I find is, depending on the print, don't go over 3.8 on your retractions. In any slicer, don't go over 3.8. Sometimes you have to go lower, but that all comes with slicing skills. So what I like to do first, and this is really important guys, is I like to take the heat break and I like to install it into the hot end just by hand. Then you're gonna need a seven mil wrench or Micro Swiss provides you with a wrench and an Allen key to do this procedure. I like to use my own seven mil wrench. And then what I do is I take an adjustable, I hold the hot block or heater block and I give it a nice little tighten, not too much, but just a nice little tighten so she's seated well. Next step I like to do is install the nozzle. This is the most important part that the heat break goes into the hot block before the nozzle. And then again, same procedure. Now guys, be careful when you're doing this. It is easy to still break off a nozzle inside. So I give an extra little tighten now, snug. And then after you assemble it, you can go ahead and install your heater cartridge and thermistor. And I like to heat tighten it before it's actually on the direct drive carriage. That's just a personal preference. You're more than willing to go ahead and put it on and give it a heat tighten after. I just like to do it while it's off the bench. I also like to do this on a nice level surface so when you install the set screw into your heat sink, which is provided in the accessory bag here, like I said, they give you a seven mil, they give you a 1.5 if you don't have one. And then you take one of these set screws and they do provide an extra one just in case you strip them out. So that's another thing you need to be careful about. Now I like to press this together from the bottom of the nozzle to the top of the heat sink, install your 1.5 set screw, and these you definitely need to be careful with because they are easy to strip. So I like to, oh, it's snug, little turn, leave it alone. That is a correctly assembled Micro Swiss all metal hot end. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to install your belt, just like you would on the stock ender or anything else. It just slides into those with the little brass fittings there. And then again, A little bit difficult. Oh, there we go. Because I'm working to show you guys how it's working out here. Now, I'm a little bit lucky here because with this printer, we already have the belt tensioner installed. So now I can just go ahead and tension that belt to where it needs to be. If you don't have a belt tensioner or you have an Ender V2, you're lucky because it already comes with a belt tensioner. If you have the Ender Pro, we do carry these upgrades as well in the shop. So if you would like belt tensioners on your Ender 3 Pro, we do carry them. Now that we've got the belt tensioned, we're gonna move on to step four, which is installing everything back onto the carriage. 
What I like to do first is install the hot end. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You just go ahead and you take that piece of Bowden tube, right? I'll just actually show you guys to make it a little easier. So you take your piece of Bowden tube that's provided in the kit, slide it in there, make sure the 45 is facing the correct direction. So when you insert it in here, it's got the correct angle. Then we take our push fitting clip, pop her in there just to keep everything secure. You go ahead and slide that into your direct drive plate. Slides up. Now they give you a bag with provided screws in your tool kit. So now you just take your M2 hex wrench with the two M3 countersunk provided screws. Again, I just snug the first one and then install the second. This way you can line that hot end up. Perfect. And then I'll snug it down. And again, there we go. Now your hot end is installed to your direct drive plate. Now we're gonna move on to the next step, step four, which is installing your extruder motor and all the extra accessories like the extruder lever arm, the spring, etc. So there are a few tricks I like to do now. I like to zip tie this cable to the motor, whether you're using the linear rail system, the direct drive system for an Ender 5 or an Ender 5 Plus, any of those, I still like to take the same procedure where I zip tie the cable down and I take some hot gun glue and just put it around the connectors. That avoids any shorts in the future from uh, the wire moving around on the X gantry. So as you can see, as it's gonna move, you're not gonna have any bending at the actual JST five pin connector. Next, I always just take one screw to start. Get it on your two mil hex wrench. Just install one to start. And again, just snug this up because you wanna be able to have some play to make sure everything else falls into place correctly. The next step I like to do is install the extruder arm Again, why I don't only snug them up so you can move that motor around and get everything in place where it needs to be. Again, I just snug that one up. You gotta make sure you use your countersunk bolts. Again, just snug up all four first. And now I'll do again the four point tighten to make sure everything's torqued down well. From here, we're going to take the pinion gear and install it onto the shaft. And to make sure your set screw is facing the back and you have the flat of your motor shaft facing you. So when you install this with your 1.5 hex driver, just gotta back that set screw off a bit to slide it onto the shaft. And now, I like to line up these, make sure everything's lining up nice. And then tighten that set screw down. Next, you're gonna have this long bolt with the collar. Sorry guys, I'm losing some of my tools here. A spring and a hand tightened nut. And you put the spring over your long M3 with the collar. That's gonna go ahead and install from the side here through, and then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Now guys, depending on the material, you can adjust your tension. Never over tighten this, because you don't want those gears forcing together too much and causing stress and overheating to your stepper motor. With that being said, guys, I just tighten it down a little bit where it's just starting to stick out the end. I find that seems to be perfect. 
All right, guys, we're gonna move on to the final step, installing your fan shroud, and maybe you have a BL touch or some other type of fan. This will also work for the stock Ender fan shroud, unless you have a V2. So if you have a V2, you're gonna have to do like I did and use the Satsana or whichever one you prefer on Thingiverse. We will post links to this. There are quite a few um, on there. Now, this one has for a 5015, part cooling blower fan and a 40 10 by 20 heat sink fan. Now I really love this design because it's still just two screws, one of them from the inner part here to set it to your aluminum mounting plate and one over here, just like your stock ender fan to mount it again. So let's go ahead and install that. Now the wiring, it has a nice little slit here for the wiring to slide into. Once it's set in place, get your two mil driver and screw number one. And screw number two it was that easy. Now you'll have to mind the wiring here a little bit. You can go ahead and a nice thing about this print is you can tuck all that right up inside there. And if you're like me, you like quick connects for your fans and stuff so you don't have to run it back to the board. So next, we just go ahead and install that 4020. Now, me personally, because just in case I need to get in there and work on it again, I just snug up two bolts as opposed to four for easy access. Final piece of Bowden tube in the top here. And one thing I can say guys is do not lose this piece. This little C-clip, don't lose that. That's important. That's what holds your piece of Bowden tube in at the top here. Okay. Plug my fan back in. Now later on, I'll put some tie wraps on there and glue that back down with a little bit of hot gun glue. That wiring in there a little neater. All right, guys. So that's the Micro Swiss direct drive with all metal hot end linear railed system installed on our Ender 3 Pro here today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you guys on the next video.